Hello, today I'm going to talk about uh, IP version 4 network address translation, commonly referred as NAT. Uh, the first thing we're going to talk will be uh, IP version 4 address space. IPv4 address space has been classified into five classes class A, class B, class C, class D, and class E. The first three classes, class A, class B, and class C, are, are unicast classes. Class D is a multicast, it's used for multicasting. And class E is an experimental class. So if you want to use an IP address in class E, you should be a member of the multi of the experimental group. Now for unicast IP version four address class, these are which is uh, the, which are the first three classes: class A, class B, and class C. Imagine a source computer communicates with destination one machine and destination two machine. So it's kind of one to one. It should establish one to one session with every destination. So the source machine is going to establish a one-to-one -one session with, the, with destination one, and the bandwidth required for this will be 1,000 kilobits per second. Also, the source machine will establish one-to-one -one session with destination two computer, and the bandwidth required will be 1,000 kilobits per second. In fact, what happens? Source machine needs to replicate bandwidth for every session it needs to establish, and the bandwidth of the source machine which is needed or which is required at the source computer is in fact 2000 kilobits per second in this example. So if the source machine needs to communicate with 1000 computers, it needs to establish 1000 sessions and each session has its own bandwidth. So just multiply the bandwidth of each session by 1000 or let's say you add, you make a, a summation or addition of all the bandwidth required by every session and you end up having this required bandwidth at the source machine. So in order to avoid this kind of problems in some situations, you can go for multicast. Multicast IP version 4 address class is defined in class D. So class D is a we can model is a kind of one to one to many session model where a source machine will uh, deliver traffic to destination one and destination two. Now, the destination IP address used should be an IP address that belongs to class D. So the IP address should be multicast IP address. Destination 1, destination 2 will receive the packets because they are members of the multicast uh, uh, address group, multicast group. Now, if the traffic uh, generated by the source to destination 1, destination 2 requires 1000 kilobit per second, this is it. It's not going to be replicated. So only one session or one uh, traffic session needs to be generated by the source. Now the packets will flow through the internet or intranet and whoever is member of the multicast group is going to receive them. So it does not need or it does not suffer from the bandwidth requirement as uh, it happens in, uh, in uh, unicast. However, uh, multicasting actually will use UDP traffic. UDP uh, transport protocol. So um, it's used, for example, in uh, video, uh, uh, in real time video, real time audio. So there are some applications where multicasting is important. So whenever you need to deliver uh, traffic to a large number of uh, destination or target machines, so uh, only one data stream needs to be established, and that the bandwidth for that data stream need to be concerned or considering only, no need to replicate as this is the case with Unicast. Now the IP version 4 addresses are uh, defined in two types. You have the public address, IP address, and the private IP address. Public IPv4 addresses are those IPv4 addresses used to communicate through the uh, internet. Uh, whereas the private IP addresses are those IP addresses that we use in uh, private internal networks or intranets. So the private range of IP version 4 addresses are reusable in different locations. So each company can have its own private range of IPv4 addresses. The same range actually will be used and reused in different locations as described and defined in RFC 1918. You can search about this RFC in, uh, on the internet using search engine, your uh, favorite search engine. So uh, private IP addresses are not allowed to go to the internet. So any link of IP version 4 address to of uh, private IPv4 address to internet is not allowed because of reusability of this range of IP addresses. Otherwise, it will create a huge duplicate problem. Duplicate. It's a. It will be a big mess on the internet. Public IP addresses are those addresses which are allowed to go through the internet. To, that we use actually to communicate through the internet. 
they should be unique. So each uh, each customer or organization or uh, entity which uses IP address for communication through the internet needs to have unique pool, unique IP addresses. It, it, it might have a pool of public IPv4 addresses, but every IP address used should be unique. Uh, these are the range of private IPv4 addresses as defined in RFC 1918. So for class A, the range is from 0. Uh, from is from is 10.0.0.0 up to 10.255.255.255. For class B, the range starts from 172.16.0.0 up to 172.31.255.255. And for class C, it's from 192.168.0.0 up to 192.168.255.255. Now, if you look at this example here, we have two intranet. Intranet 1 that belongs to an organization, let's say A, and intranet 2 that belongs to organization B. Now, these two intranets, these two intranets are using private network. And these are private networks and are using private IP version 4 addresses. So probably they will be using the same range of uh, addresses as we see here. Of course, because we said that private IPv4 addresses are reusable, so they can be used in different locations. However, if, for example, intranet 1 users wants to communicate with internet or outside network, they cannot do so with a private IP address because this is not allowed. Imagine Intranet 1 users uh, communicate with Internet using private IPv4 addresses. Also, Intranet 2 users communicate with Internet using private IPv4 addresses. So this will create conflict, IP conflict here. And since IPv4 addresses or private IPv4 addresses are used in hundreds or thousands of different locations, so it will create a big problem. That's why users on the Internet, when they communicate with outside, let's say with Internet or outside networks, which have global public IP addresses, uh, they will send the packet through a router like this. This is an edge router, RTR1. Now, this router has two interfaces. One interface is connected to the intranet, and the second interface connected to the internet. Now, interfa the interface connected to the intranet one is referred to as inside interface, and the interface connected to the internet is referred to as outside interface. Now, this router is configured for netting. Netting, it means that it will receive a packet from the internet, internet one, it will process it based on netting, and then it will send it to the internet. The same story will happen with internet to users, whenever they send packet to internet or uh, outside network. So what happens inside netting, netbox? This is what happens. So all the packets from intranet to internet, let's say in, on the internal network or intranet, the packet generated is generated from the source IP address 172.16.0.100 and this is a private IPv4 address and it is destined to the IP address 212.10.0.30 this is on the inside network when the packet will reach uh, the router which is acting here as a netbox it's nothing will be performant how nothing here will will consider the source IP address the private IP address and then it will translate it into a public or global IP address okay of course even not to it will not touch the uh, destination IP address it will leave it as it is okay this is a simple nothing so the source IP address as generated on the inside network will be translated into a, a public or global IP address for the outside network and then the router will send the packet with the public source IP address through this outside interface to internet. So any users, all users on the internet or outside networks, when they capture, for example, in the case they receive the packet, they will see as if the packet has been generated from this IP address, 196.15.16.1. So the private IP address from where the packet was generated, was truly generated, does not show. I mean, it is hidden. All the reply packets from internet to intranet so when the router will receive, this router will uh, receive the reply packet through this outside interface, it's going to see that the source IP address is 212.10.0.30. This was a destination in the beginning. And the destination IP address is 196.15.60.1. So on the outside network, this is how the router acting as a netbox will view the packet. Now, 
The router will consult a NAT table, the NAT table that he used previously to do the translation, and it will find that this IP address, this is the IP address into which the private IP address has been translated, which is 172.16.0.100. So what it will do, very simply, is going to take off this IP address and replace it with the private IP address. This is the IP address that belongs to the internal host which started or which uh, started the traffic or the communication. So now on the inside network, the router acting as NAT will forward this packet, will forward this packet with this source IP address and this destination IP address. Finally, the packet will be received by the internal host. Thank you for viewing this presentation. The next presentation will be on NAT configuration. This is Hakim Adish. Bye.